Today we're going to cover some more features of the EXS sampler. Okay, so it's not completely a work day, but I, I, I think I should be able to get through the, the things I want to show you before the end of class. You have a little bit of time to work on your projects. Um, Tuesday will be completely a work day, so you come in expecting to be able to work, but uh, you, this is not something you should expect to finish in class on Tuesday. Uh, it would be great if you came to class Tuesday with a mostly finished project that I could listen to and give you comments on how to enhance it and make it better. So uh, keep that in mind. Work toward that over the weekend. Schedule some time in here for yourself for the weekend. Okay. Um, so we did a uh, quiz to start out first, and you guys are not looking at the right screen. Let's see, this one. Okay. Uh, we did a quiz to start out, which hopefully, which kind of. Uh, gathered some uh, bits of information from the reading, from the copyright discussion on Tuesday, from uh, talking about samplers. Uh, we did a homework check, so thank you for letting me go around and, and uh, check your progress. I think most of you had good samples. Some of you had samples that were too long. Some of you had samples that were too short. Uh, basically, you want something that's going to give you a, a variety of hits, but not too many hits. Okay. Uh, if you load a two-minute song into the XS sampler, you're going to have way too many hits, basically. But if you load a, you know, 10-second uh, clip, that probably will give you the right number of hits that you need, basically. And I'll, I'll kind of reiterate and rehash uh, some of that today in uh, my demonstration. But uh, be mindful of, of trying to load too many in there, uh, too many sounds in at the same time uh, through the automatic check. And I'll, I'll try to take a moment to also show you how to load just a sound sample itself, because I've showed you how to do the auto sampler create. Uh, remind me at some point to also show you how to just drop a sound file in there on one uh, sample, okay? So one last reminder about Digital Media Festival. Tomorrow is the deadline for submitting, so if you have a an audio project, uh, and by audio project, it can be a video that you have done the audio for and you want to be graded on it as an audio project, whether you want it to be uh, submitted, and I, I've said grade, but it's not really grading. It's submitting for the festival as an audio project, okay? Uh, you can also submit things that are videos for the video part of the festival, uh, okay? And they will be first curated by the faculty, and then they go off to our external judge, who is not a member of the faculty, who looks at it and selects our first, second, and third prizes. And as I've mentioned already many times, there is real money associated with this, so please submit. If you don't submit, you can't win, right? Okay, so if you've got projects out there that you think are, are your best work, go ahead and submit it. And you can submit multiple items, so uh, don't submit you know, 12 different videos. But if you've got two or three that you're trying to decide between, might as well submit them all, okay? Um, so... Just to review what we talked about on Tuesday, what's a sampler? Somebody give me a one or two sentence version of what a sampler is. I have headphones, you're not listening to me. Headphones off. For, okay. What's a sampler? Somebody give me a one or two sentence synopsis of what a sampler is. Travis. A sampler Tabs. Uh, triggers pre recorded audio, um, audio files. Yeah. And, Okay, so triggers pre-recorded audio files. What causes it to trigger those audio files? Something that we've been talking about and working with in other projects. MIDI. MIDI, right? Okay. So the difference between just taking sound files and cutting them up like we were in, I don't know, project one, right, versus a sampler is that now they've been cut up and I can trigger them and re-trigger them using the MIDI keyboard, okay, uh, which hopefully speeds up the process, yes, okay. Um, I've... I've seen many students throughout the years try to create what should be sampler pieces by cutting up and rhythmically aligning on the grid sam uh, audio files rather than actually loading them into a sampler and speeding up the process by just playing the keyboard. Okay, um, so keep in mind that. So what is copyright then? Who can give me a one or two? Somebody else. So Tavish has spoke. Jacob has spoke. Somebody else. What's a one or two answer to what copyright is? Denisa, yeah. Yeah. Protect them from what? From ah, the other people using it without their permission. Okay, that uh, exclusive rights to control your intellectual property. Okay, that's what copyright is. Okay, what then is fair use? Somebody else. Georgia. 
you're in the realm of these categories, you're able to use parts of the song or use the song mm -hmm. or the piece from mm -hmm. the passage from a blank point. Yeah. Passage from the, yeah, you're, you've got the three categories right, and you're talking about passages. So if I wanted to. Let's say you're like writing an essay and you're yeah. using a quote um, from Shakespeare, like it was yesterday. Yeah. You know, you're able to use that in your essay without getting any fines or anything like that. Even Correct. Even though it's in the public domain, but. Right. Okay, so, or, I mean, to use a contemporary author, yeah, let's use a contemporary author who's in, in, under, clearly under copyright, uh, I don't know, John Green, okay, Stephen King, yeah, his work would still be un, in, uh, under copyright, okay, uh, and will be until he dies plus 70 years, right, okay, so keep that in mind. So, I mean, what, what then allows, I don't know, Paramount to go to Stephen King and say, we want to do a film adaptation of, I don't know, Carrie. Or what now? Well, are they making a parody, or that? I mean, it, it it's pretty much billed as Stephen King's Carrie. Yes. <laughs> permission, paying him. Yes. Okay. Uh, they ask for his permission, and he's able to demand money in return for his permission, basically. Okay. Uh, they're agreeing to assign to them uh, uh, to assign to them the right to make movies from Carrie. Okay, and usually that's done in some sort of exclusive basis. Okay, so I mean, uh, you know, Paramount's not going to pay Stephen King for the rights to Carrie, and then uh, let Stephen King turn around and sell the rights to Universal, and turn around and sell the rights to MGM, and turn around and sell the rights again to NBC. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Usually there's some sort of exclusivity when those rights are assigned to somebody. Okay. Uh, because you don't want an author uh, assigning those rights to everybody so that now there's 20 different adaptations of that Stephen King novel, right? You want there to be one so that that movie studio can make money off of it, okay? Sometimes that, that gets a little fuzzy, like, uh, I don't know, James Bond is an example where it gets kind of fuzzy, yes, okay? Because there's uh, somebody got co-authorship rights on, uh, what was it, Thunderball back in the day, one of those early James Bond films, and they've been able to make derivative works based on their part of the copyright yeah, Alex. What about movies where they like make fun of other movies? Like Scary Movie Five. Yeah, if yeah. you've been on YouTube today, yes. Okay, that's the okay. Yeah, th that's considered parody. Okay, so. so they the, pay the other, I mean, sometimes they try and make it seem like you know they're not like making fun of that movie. Mm -hmm. Like they try and do certain things so they make it distinct. Do they get away with that, or is that still? It's can it's under parody. Okay. Okay, so they they're allowed to parody those movies without seeking permission. Okay. Okay, good. So let's see here. Okay, so your unit four project. Let's recap this. I've expanded the uh, description. This description is on Blackboard. If you go, uh, if you if you're someone that's uh, nearsighted, you can look at it on you on uh, Blackboard under the the Tuesday Thursday link for next week. Okay, uh, that's where this description is. So the idea you're using Logic Pro. We're inspired here by Plunderphonics. Okay, so we're we're grabbing samples. We're using we're cutting them up. We're using the EXS software instrument. Okay, um, I'm I'm making it clear that you should you you must use the EXS 24 to realize this. Okay, so don't be cutting this up in the audio track. Okay, actually build an EXS 24 instrument. Okay. Um, the purpose in having you have uh, having you use a voice and a drum sample is to make sure you've got enough variety. That's the other reason I'm talking about. You know, uh, if you had a, a clip that was just one hit, go back and find something that's a little bit longer that has multiple hits, uh, or something that has just two hits. Go back and find maybe something that has six different hits that you can pull from. Um, that's that's the idea is to have kind of variety in your piece. Okay. Uh, you then use MIDI sequencing to drive your sampler, okay? Uh, so you're, you're not just cutting, again, cutting up the audio files. You're actually using the MIDI sequencing to drive your sampler instrument that you've built. Um, I'm going to introduce a little bit of basic processing and automation to, to show you some other ways that you can vary your sound today, okay? Uh, and then your source audio, uh, this is my, uh, my uh, stipulation here in terms of the fact that we're, we're inspired by Plunderphonics and we can't be inspired by Plunderphonics and then me tell you, well, you can't flaunt copyright because that's kind of the point of Plunderphonics, yes? Okay. So 
Your source audio need not be licensed by Creative Commons, so it can it can come from wherever. I don't care this time around. Okay, uh, but your use must be clearly transformative. Okay, what do I? Uh, so transformative. Where did that term show up yesterday when we were talking about copyright? The John Oswald piece. Okay, well I'm looking. Taylor thinks he remembers. He's working, trying. No. Yeah. It's one of the tests for fair use is how transformative is this use of the original copy copyrighted material. Okay. The more transformative, the more you can rely on ca claiming fair use. Okay. Uh, it will. It might not get you uh, clear of any copyright claims. Uh, but you'll be on much surer footing if you actually are transforming the loop rather than just simply grabbing two seconds and looping it over and over again and, uh, I don't know, taking the drum loop from a Led Zeppelin song and then singing the Led Zeppelin song over that drum loop from the Led Zeppelin song, okay, because you can't hire John Bonham to play drums for you because he's dead. But anyway, okay, makes sense? It, the transformative possibilities is what we're looking at here, okay? Uh, it's not simply to grab a drum loop and loop it over and over again so you don't have to go out and hire a drummer, okay? Or you have, don't have to go out and hire Quentin Tarantino to, to speak his lines for you, okay? That's the more transformative, the more better, okay? Uh, important questions to consider. You can look through these, okay? Uh, finished pieces must be uploaded to SoundCloud. We're using SoundCloud this time for, up, for upload, not YouTube because there is no video component, yes, okay? Uploading these to SoundCloud, and you need to submit the link. Uh, well, let's see, I'm following everybody, so as long as you submit it to SoundCloud, I'll see that you've submitted to SoundCloud before midnight next Wednesday. Okay, so there's a quicker turnaround again, again on this, this project, but uh, all of the MIDI skills, all of the logic skills that you developed in the last project should be applicable in this project, yes? Okay, all we're doing is really adding a new instrument and a new way of thinking about sound, yes? So it's completely within the realm of possibility for next week, okay? So that means next Thursday in class we'll be doing our critique setup, okay? One to two minutes. I also made it a little shorter than the last one because of the fact that it's a shorter turnaround, okay? Any questions about the project and what the scope is? What the expectations are? Yeah, Alex? Length. Length. One to two minutes. I think I have that in the description. Somewhere, uh, it's kind of it's kind of buried here. One to two minute piece, okay. But yeah, well, just to make it clear, one to two minutes is what the benchmark is. Okay. Um, I mean, it should be long enough that you can pull multiple words out of it or parts of words out of it. Um, it shouldn't just be one word. Unless you want to pull multiple one-word samples from a sound source and cue those up, okay? Yeah. In the end product, does our vocal sample? Do you have to be able to tell that, or do you have to be able to like hear words that can be like sliced up? I I would say slicing it up means that it's more transformative. So therefore, I would I I, I like slice up stuff, okay? But together, yeah, yeah. The idea here is to get uh, more variety in your sound samples. Okay, uh, I guess if I had one overriding critique of some of the synthesizer projects I heard last time is that they were a little too one. Uh, some of them were a little too one-dimensional. Not all of them, but some of them were the same synthesizer over and over again, and I wasn't getting variety in your synthesizer sounds, okay? I know I haven't finished creating them yet, but that was my, that's kind of one of my things, and I'm, I, I'm putting this uh, stipulation in this assignment to help combat that this time, because it could very, be very easy to do just percussion samples and have it sound pretty one-dimensional, as opposed to if you have two different sound sources, voice, percussion, you're at least halfway there to having variety in your sound sources, okay? 
Make sense? Should I, I mean, should I just load the samples and loop them over and over again? Would that, do you think that would be a good project? No, okay. Uh, uh, cut them up, resequence them, retrigger them, okay? Uh, let's get into the ASX sampler, okay? We're actually going to recap a little bit of what we did yesterday, but then we're going to get into some new additional features, okay? So basically, this is my sound file from yesterday, uh, from Tuesday, but I've uh, pulled some of the sounds out. Sound, sound, sound. Sample, 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 uh, and chop up things because I mean if you remember what I originally said it was something like this sound samples with less background noise and some silence between hits work best for transient detection so how long is that that's a seven sa second sample okay for those of you that are having issues of length and how long it is okay uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute that now and go back over here. And now I can play it. Oh, come on. And now it's not going to work. Awesome. Sound, sound, sound. Sample. Samples. 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 Okay. I can play around with my voice, basically pulling out various uh, words. Okay. Um, so let's. Uh, recap the automatic process, okay? Uh, I need a sound file to start with, okay? One thing that I, I intentionally waited to show you until after you went out on the internet looking for samples is that there are a number of samples already included in Logic, whether you realize this or not, okay? So uh, if you need a sample to recap this process, go ahead and follow along with me here. Click where it says Media in the upper right-hand corner, okay? There's a lot of samples available to you. There's also a lot of loops available to you. So click on where it says loops. So click on media. Click on loops. And then click on where it says all drums. And it should bring up all the drum loops that are actually built into Logic for you to use. Yes? Is this list long enough for you? OK. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this one down here at the bottom, Funk Kit 4. Okay, and it'll loop indefinitely if I click on it, okay? So if you want to follow along and do exactly what I'm doing here, uh, media, loops, all drums, scroll down to the bottom, there's one that says vintage funk kit number four, okay? You need an audio track in your project in order to do this, okay? So this auto building of a sampler instrument, you need an audio track. If you don't have an audio track, how do I add one? Give me one or two ways to add an audio track. What now? Drop it in here. Well, I need a track first to drop it onto. Yeah. It'll let you. It'll let you drop without. Yeah. Let's try this. I don't believe you guys. Look at that. If I drop it in without actually clicking on anything, yes, it will create a track for me. So, wow, I just saved a step. Okay. So there's. I'm dropping in my vintage funk kit number four. Uh, I'm gonna back it up here, okay. Oh, this is still playing from the loop browser, okay. Once you're done and you've dropped in your drum loop, okay, this is the one that I recommend because I've got some, uh, there's, there's some nice hits in this basically, some nice variety that I can play around with. Once you're done playing with your drum loop, go ahead and close the media browser by clicking the media button in the upper right hand corner, okay. That'll get you back to actually using the, the transport over here. Silence. Beautiful. Okay, I've got my composition going on here already. Okay, so I've got my vintage funk kit that I want to convert into an EXS sampler instrument. Okay, I have to first highlight it. Okay, and if you're not on the pointer tool in your escape palette, make sure you're on the pointer tool. So click to highlight it. Again, how do I know that it's highlighted? Black, yes. Okay, that's unhighlighted. That's highlighted. Okay, it's a subtle difference. Go to audio and convert regions to new sampler track. Click that. It's going to open up the, uh, the little pop-up floating window here. Okay. 
It's going to ask me what I want to name this kit. I can give it a name if I want to. I, I'll just, I'll, you know, I'll call this my in class week 11 Thursday kit. Awesome. Okay. Trigger note ranges. What, what, uh, it defaults to 0 to 127. Why do I want to increase maybe that bottom number from 0? For key, full keyboard, right? Where So these numbers correspond to the pitches found on a, on a musical keyboard, okay? And middle C, if you know what middle C is, okay, middle C is 48, okay? So if I'm going left to right here, left is going to be lower. Let's see, for you guys, that's right, okay? But for me, it's left. Let's see if I'll do it this way, okay? Middle C is 48 in MIDI note numbers. It's going to look great on the video, right? Okay. Uh, middle C is 48. Okay. If you go left, you're going down in numbers. If you go right, you're going up in numbers. Okay. So if this is 48, where do you think zero is? Out here somewhere, yes? Okay. So if you start assigning samples to zero, it's way off the keyboard. Okay. So do yourself a favor, up that first note to 36, okay? So that's actually where your where these hardware keyboards start, okay? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And watch the magic at work here, okay? It actually mutes the audio region for me. It creates a MIDI region, which actually cues up and plays the sound uh, hits for me. Okay, where did it go? Is that, so it's this one, right? Yeah. Okay. If I need to convince myself of that, I will uh, mute this track, this audio track, and hit play. Can you see? Okay, here's one thing. Let me see if I can sh do this. This won't show up on the recording video, but look at that zoom, okay? Everybody see how right here at the beginning of the track, there's a little level meter? And when I hit play... Okay, where you see the level meter, that means there's sound coming out of those tracks. Where you don't see a level meter, there's no sound coming out of that track. That's how I know that my audio track is not making sound, but my EXS track is. Even though the ones muted, the bar still came up on the Yeah, track well, too. it also, I mean, it's doubly muted basically because it's not making noise and I muted it. Okay, so I'm, I'm making total security that, I, that it's not going to make noise, okay? So... How do I, uh, let, me, let me just uh, di uh, diverge here for a minute. Th the reason I know this is doubly muted, this gray, you see how this region is gray like this? Okay. I can mute individual regions, audio regions, MIDI regions. Okay. You may not have noticed this, but in the escape palette, there's something called the mute tool. Okay. When I click that, I can click and unmute regions. I can mute this one. No, maybe not. It's not going to let me. I have to mute individual notes, I guess. Ah, now they're, now they're going to show up gray. So this gray pattern, see how this one's gray, this one's not? This one means that region is muted, OK? I'm going to come back to that in a minute as I start uh, building out this track, OK? So now I've got this sample kit. If I click and highlight this track, I can play some of the samples. See how a nice, clean drum loop can be pulled apart, okay? Okay? So that's me playing on the keyboard. That's not the, the drum loop anymore, okay? Um, by default, when you do that auto-create, it's going to sequence the MIDI notes. Let me see if I can pull this up in piano roll, okay? It's going to sequence the MIDI notes in order so that it actually reconstructs your drum loop, okay? Um, you may or may not want that. And in fact, I think to be more transformative, you don't want that. Okay. So let me do this. I'm going to go ahead and go back. I've got the mute tool running here. I'm going to mute that one. I'm going to unmute this one. It's being kind of goofy. There it is. Okay. It seems like the screen updates are happening. Uh, they're lagging. Yeah. Go back to my pointer tool. Okay. Let me check my list here. Okay. So I've got my sampler instrument created. How do I edit these samples? 
Anybody remember from Tuesday? How do I start to edit the, uh, the, the trigger options for this sampler instrument that I've just created? Yeah, okay, so that's the first step. Pull up the ESX24. So behind the scenes, what Logic has done for you automatically, okay, if you go, if you click, highlight this new sampler track, if I click where it says EXS24, that's the software instrument that has been loaded. That is the software sampler in Logic, okay? Yeah. So I open up the ESX24, and right here, inconspicuously in the upper right-hand corner, there's a button that says Edit. If I click that, this is actually the, the, the information that is automatically generated by that create sampler instrument from audio region, okay? This is all the information that's been created, okay? If I, de uh, uh, let's see. If I decide that I want to add a sound file to this later, I can do that, okay? Let me see if I can do this real quick. Hit zone. If I go to zone, new zone, okay? It's actually going to create a new zone for me on the keyboard. And notice that it, this, this blue-gray bar actually spans the entire keyboard. I probably don't want it to do that. I'm going to grab the end of it here, move it up. No, not going to let me do that. Uh, where's my new zone? There it is, zone number 27. OK, let me go the other way about it here. Let me start by making this. See how I'm, I'm shrinking the size of my zone here? I'm going to make this go down to D B5, okay? So I just created this blue-gray bar right here as a new zone for a new sound file, okay? Here's the automatic way of doing that. If I go on my hard drive and I'm going to look for just an AIFF file, let's see, what kind of fun stuff can I find? EI triangle, EI wave. I don't think those are going to be quite fun. Let me see. That's not the kind of fun I'm looking for. Audio. I have plenty of things. I don't know. Pick a city here. Toronto, San Jose, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Brooklyn? Okay. I'll go to my edits. I'll go to my percussion hits. Let's see. That sounds nice. I might want to add that. Okay. So it's one percussion hit. Okay. If I now, let me see if it, um, this is where I start to get window overload here. If I now, can I drag and drop this? Boom. Okay. I now have just added to these. Let me see how I did that. Do I need to do it again? So I basically just on this side of the keyboard. Oh, where's it at? So you can select each individual part and give it its own pitches. Yeah, I can. Well, here, I'll, I'll shrink this one. So I'll, let me repeat this process here. I went to Zone, New Zone. Okay. Scroll down. I just created Zone 28. And you can rename this and make it something more useful like that cool sound. Okay. Okay. I can then take the key range because the key range is where it shows up on the keyboard. Okay. Okay, so this is now over here. Let me see, where's that? Oh, it's not going to show up here. Okay, I can play these keys now and trigger this sound, except that I haven't loaded a sound yet. So I can go to the finder. I don't know. Uh, you guys want to hear what Wicked sounds like? That's a pretty cool one. I like that one. Okay, so I can drop that from the finder onto this zone. And now on my keyboard, where's that at? Is it mixing the two? No, it's playing that one no, sound. Just, I mean, that's just the wicked one. That's just the wicked one. Okay. Yeah. Um, have the keyboards, are the keyboards different for these computers? Yes. The except the Rollins. For some reason the driver on the Rollins is broken. You need to if you're gonna use the keyboards in here, use the M Audio ones. Okay? The rolling ones, for some reason, the driver is not working. I'm still trying to track down a solution for that. Okay, I apologize that we have more rollings than we have in audio basically. But okay, so everybody see that process? Okay, that's the non 
automatic process. And if you feel more comfortable doing that, then by all means do that, okay? But you see how the automatic process lets you drop in a loop and just simply cut up and go, okay? So I've talked about the key range here. Let's talk about some of the other features here. Let's recap them. The pitch, okay? You notice there's a pitch option for each row? That represents the key on the keyboard where your sound file will play back at its natural pitch. Say that again. That's the key on the keyboard where your original sound file will play back at its original pitch. Okay. So you notice when I played this sound in the finder, you hear that pitch? Now when I go to play this on the keyboard, that's not the original pitch, yes? Everybody hear that that's not the original pitch? Okay. So the way I can fix that, you notice right here, my range is F3 to B3, okay? But my pitch is set to D5. So if I increase this, or let's see, decrease this to match this first note right here. So the, key, the first note of the key range and the pitch, now when I play that F, it plays at its natural pitch. If I if I go up, if you play D5, would it have not worked if it's not in the blue range? It wouldn't have worked because it's in, not in the blue range. Yes. Okay. okay. But I can set I whatever it, yeah. key. If I want to change this up and actually make it a G, where'd it go? Now G is going to be my natural pitch. F is going to be a little bit lower. Okay, makes sense. So that's the relationship between the key range and the pitch options on the row. Yeah. Is there a way to remove a zone, or do you just click delete? Yep, click delete. So to remove a zone, just click delete. I'm going to undo because I actually kind of like having that in my drum kit. Okay. So everybody see how you can add individual. So those of you that had like little individual hits, if you want to find some more individual hits, go for it. Start building your kit that way. Basically, my my thought was that it would be easier to start with a loop or a short segment and let it chop it up at first and then fix it, okay? So let's get back to my drum sounds. That one sounds... It's almost too good, right? There's a little bit of attack missing on that one, okay? So let me go to this drum sound. Where is it at? That's a D right there, D1. Okay. If I want to change the beginning and ending of that sample, what do I do? Anybody remember? I want to tweak the starting and ending points from the original sound file. Anybody remember how to do that? Because I showed you that on Tuesday. It's not double click, but right here next to where it says the sound file name, it says open and sample editor. That's what you want. Okay, so click open and sample editor. It's going to open down here. And this is where, again, screen real estate. Unfortunately, let's see. I guess you could do, well, let's see. Screen sets should come in handy here, yes? Root, root. Okay. Well, of course, then I've lost my other window. Awesome. I didn't want that to happen. Where'd it go? It's totally gone. Excellent. Good going, Wallach. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. I want to have both of these on the screen at the same time, okay? Because this is what I've highlighted. This is what's now in the sample editor down here. I can zoom in or out. Let's see. And see how it shows me right there. This is the part of the original sound file that has been selected for that key. Okay, and I'm I, I'm you know I'm a perfectionist. I like to get in here and uh, fix these up. Let's see, I'm missing maybe a little bit of the intro, so I'm gonna get let's see right here. I can grab and move it a little bit ahead. I'm also missing a little bit of the ending. I wanted to kind of elongate this, so I'm gonna pull it out a little bit now. Ah, I'm getting a little bit more of the high sound of that snare. Okay, I like the sound of that snare better. Okay, 
So everybody see how I did that? It was click on the down arrow, open and sample editor, and then down here I can tweak my beginning and ending points. Not this orange, but this down here the blue, beginning and ending points, okay? So I want to make sure you know how to do that. Uh, let's see, we've gone through the zone options. Okay, saving instruments. You may or may not realize this, but now that you've created this sampler instrument masterpiece, okay, you can actually save this separate from your logic project. Why would I want to do that? Future projects is more where I was going, yes. So if you build an awesome drum kit for this project, you can use that awesome drum kit on as many future projects as you'd like. Okay? So the way you to do that, in here, instrument, save, or save as, one of those two. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Well, I see I already had it saved. But if I do save as, okay, when I do save as, I'll, I'll just show you the finder window here. It's actually going to save in your user folder, which in a lab situation is not so friendly, right? Because it's now going to be on that computer and not that computer when you come into work, okay? Uh, but if this were on your own machine, you could build up your user library, application support, logic, sampler instruments, and you could have multiple sampler instruments that you've built to be kind of your presets, if you will, for future projects, okay? You can also save it somewhere on the hard drive and it saves it with this .exs extension and you can then move to another computer too, okay? Yeah? Does it save, does it bundle, like does it create a copy of the original sample bundled with the exs or does it reference the original file? Let me show you here. So I'm going to close this. I've got this project saved. We do save as, oh, I don't want to save a copy. Cancel. Save as. I'll show you what it does. This is Thursday in class. Okay. I'm going to hide logic for a second. Because I've got this project now. Where to go? Boom, boom. Let me get my calendar off this. Digital audio slides. Here's my project, okay? In my project folder, it's going to save the sampler instrument. Dot .exs, okay, this is the one that I just created, okay. I'm going to answer your question by asking you a question. The size of this dot .exs file is 8 kilobytes. Do you think there's any sound file in there? No. no. Okay, so this is where you have to be careful, okay. Saving your exs project does not save the audio file. It saves references to the audio file, yes, okay. So see how you can answer your own question by just looking at the file size? Yeah, Jacob. To make it save with the EXS project, I'm not sure, but you'll notice in the project folder over in audio files, it has these audio files that I've been uh, importing. And in fact, when I go back to logic and I do save as, okay, these options down here you might not have paid attention to before. But See these, see these two options right here? Anybody read those? Anybody not nearsighted in the back can read those? Copy EXS instruments to project folder and copy EXS samples to project folder. Okay? If you, now that you're getting into sampling and using sampler instruments, you want to make sure that when you're saving your project, you check those two things. It should be self-explanatory why you want to check those two things, yes? Okay? So when I say save now, Okay, yeah, I can replace that. And I go back in here. I got the, I should have the whole thing. Sampler instruments. Samples. Look at that. There's my samples. There's that Kalimba file I went and found in the deep recesses of my hard drive. Okay. That I recorded in Brooklyn. Okay. So those are important options for saving your project. So that was one of the things I wanted to hit today. Saving your instruments that you build and saving your projects, making sure, again, file management, making sure all the files are there so that when you take this folder and move it to another machine or move it to your own machine or move it to the other side of the lab or into the studio, all the files are there for you to keep going, okay? Make sense? Okay.
Transformations. I left out an S in transformations, so sorry about that. I'm looking at the Blackboard list that I have here, okay? That's where I am on my list of things I want to get to today. It's now 11.02, okay? So I might have to fly through some of these, okay? You have, okay, so you've got a, uh, a sample kit that you like. You want to make some tweaks to it, okay? Let me get rid of this sample editor. Let me bring up, I'm going to highlight this MIDI region that was created by default, and I'm going to open up Piano Roll. In fact, I'm going to actually go to the, win I'm going to go to another screen set, and I'm going to open up a big Piano Roll because I like to be able to see what I'm doing, okay? So there's my Piano Roll with all my individual hits timed perfectly so that I can perfectly recreate the, the, the drum loop, okay? That's maybe not so interesting, yes? to actually recreate the sound style with the MIDI loops, okay? So what can I do? Well, I can make some small tweaks in here. I can pull this one down, pull this one up, pull this one down. Oh, it's gonna shorten it. Um, pull this one, let me just, I'll swap this one out, okay? What am I doing here? What's the, what's the net effect of these kind of transformations that I'm... Yeah, I am resequencing the drum loop. Because what's happening, vertical height in this case, means what part of the sound file am I playing? And since I'm keeping the horizontal placement the same, it's going to play the same rhythm, but it's going to play a different hit each time. I like it. I'm going to keep that. Uh, I'm accidentally changing some of the horizontal displacement here. Okay, now if I hit return and play this sound sample, let me mute that other one, <laughs> so you don't listen to me. Oh, there, number two. Okay, over here, that's different. Yes. Okay. Um, let me go back to the first screen set here, okay. This is where copying and pasting, uh, it becomes your friend, okay. Because so, if you, if I want to make a duplicate of this MIDI region, how would I do that? Control C? No. Or Control C? That's copy. No. Okay. Co Apple C, Apple V, we'll paste it, okay? Option click drag, yeah. Option click drag is the method I usually use, okay? So if I option click drag, I can make a copy, okay? Uh, okay. So option click drag makes a copy of it for me, okay? Now I can go back in here, I can click on this, this is highlighted, so if I go back to, let's see, I've got this one highlighted, so now I can, let's, I don't know, I'll resequence this again here. I'll flatten it out a little bit. Nope. Okay, flattening it out some more. Let me hit rewind. Now I've got this. So I've got two different variations that I just created by small tweaks up and down of the mini notes. Yes? We see how that happened? Okay. Uh, let's see. What else can I do? We just keep going. Okay. Option click drag. Okay. How can I tell these apart now? Because they're all called in class week 11R. Change the names. Color code them. Change the names. Both. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, text for right now. This is going to be variation 1. This will be ver uh, variation 2. This will be variation 3. Okay, so I'm going to, I've got this one highlighted. If I go back to my piano roll, I can make some more changes, right? Okay, if I get back on my pointer tool, lovely. Functions transform. Don't forget about this menu. There's a lot of good options in here, okay? Particularly random pitch. What do you think random pitch does? Yeah, randomly resequences. Oh, wait. Well, 
I'm randomly changing it from C1 to C2. I'm gonna, I've got this selected, so I don't have to hit select and operate, I can hit operate only. No, there it is. Lovely, here's my randomly resequenced version. Okay, everybody hear how that works? I can also... Well, as long as these are, I don't, as long as I don't change the horizontal position, that is the, this is the original rhythm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can also go back to transform random, I can do random velocity. Humanize is one of my favorites. Okay. Because if I do humanize, this is actually going to randomize uh, multiple things. Okay. And I like to crank up the velocity randomization myself. Okay. So I'm going to select and operate. Let me see what happened with the colors. Okay. And in fact, let me randomize velocity, just velocity. Oh, that's good. Let me lower this one to 100. Okay. So it's going to pick a random velocity between 40 and 100. Okay. Remember that 0 to 128 or your 0 to 127 range shows up a lot in MIDI? That's because this is all MIDI data, okay? Operate only. Now I've got some nice variations in my sound. And if I go back and play now. Okay? So now it's a little bit quieter, but they're quieter and random. Yes, Denisa. Uh, I have a question. Um, yeah. Hmm? If you save the project, you're saving the MIDI data. Yeah, but I mean, so they would record not the all versions of the drums. Ah. Okay, so I, I think what you're asking is, what if I just start right here? I've got this track record enabled. I know that my, okay, I got my, my kick and my snare down here. If I hit record, Lovely. Okay. So I just recorded that part basically here. I'm going to change the name of it. This is me playing. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm going to change the color of it as well to make it purple because I know that it's not me uh, transforming it in any way. Okay. Let me get back to my pointer tool. If I click on this, okay. Maybe this, maybe this is uh, my timing's a little off. So let me select all of it. How do I fix the timing of my performance? Quantization, yes. Okay, quantize here. I'm going to go ahead and quantize it to the 16th note because I think that's the shortest rhythm I played. And now if I play this. Oh, oh yeah, I'm at the very beginning. I don't want to do that. Let me jump to this part. I'm actually going to loop this part for myself. Okay. So if I click up here and create a green zone, so I clicked and dragged to create that, it's now going to loop that part of it. This loop button down here tells me that something is selected. Okay, so there's, there's my recording that I just did, okay? And if I hit save now on the project, it's going to save that performance, okay? As far as the humanizing thing goes and the transforming, yep. just, compared to last project when we were just using the keyboard as like whatever MIDI settings we created, mm -hmm. when we're doing this thing with the EX24, mm -hmm. it's automatically like as if you were playing MIDI on a keyboard where like it's always just that whatever volume it's set? Not necessarily. Right no. There, no, no. It's it's just that I'm probably hammering the keys pretty hard because I'm, okay. I'm oh, thinking okay. percussively and I'm doing and this. So back, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. You can also do the step input way with the keyboard to where it, you can set a length and actually like play each note out on the keyboard and it'll put a note and set length in there. Yeah. Here's what I like to do. Keep the velocity that you press on the yeah. keyboard. Yeah. Because I have limited keyboard skills, I, okay, I like to start like by doing this. Pencil tool, create a MIDI region. Okay? So if I go to the arrange window, I click pencil tool, I can create an, a MIDI region here, okay? Now I can click and go down to the MIDI region. Let me 
go down here. Where's my bass drum? Okay. So now if I click Escape, go to the pencil tool, the pencil tool in the piano roll actually lets me add notes. That's probably too many. Yeah. So maybe I want to delete some of those. But. Okay. But maybe I want to start with that. Okay. Hit play. Okay. I can also option click drag when I'm down here in the piano roll too. Okay, there's my initial bass kick. Okay. So now option click drag. Okay, I make a copy, extend my loop. Okay, now I'm in see how I'm highlighted here? I'm in the second region. So I can I can start adding things and not affect my first region. So let me hit play here. So there's my set. Okay. Maybe I want to add another one. I can slide my loop over. Now I'm listening. There it is right there. Pencil tool, option click drag. Okay. Now, hi hats is where human eyes comes into is, is your friend because nobody hits the hi-hat exactly the same every time. So transform, humanize. I can add some velocity range here. Operate. So listen to that hi-hat again. Here I was kind of throbbing and, okay. It's totally random. What I usually like to do is randomize first and then go back and say, you know what, I would actually, if I were a drummer, which I'm not, I would actually accent the down beats a little bit more and I pull down the other, yeah, 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 okay. How did I do on my thing? I didn't get to any EQ processing or single band options. Maybe I'll make a bonus video to show you how to do that stuff because that is a whole nother layer of stuff that you can add. But hopefully you see a lot of possibilities here in composing with these sampled instruments, yes? Okay, make sure that you're working on this over the weekend, get started on this. Uh, I would love to sit down on Tuesday and go around the room and listen to where you guys are at and offer tweaks, offer suggestions about extra things you could do not sit down with you and say, okay, what are you starting on? Okay, so start on this over the weekend. Have something in progress on Tuesday. I will see you all then. Thank you.